The world's biggest multinational corporations usually deal with global issues when it comes to M&A rather than country-specific problems, and they want lawyers who can operate on a similar, seamless global level. They often have their own sometimes large legal teams, but they still want external legal advisors for the contentious, out-of-the-ordinary challenges. Well, to talk about this, let's meet two partners and co-heads of Global M&A at the international law firm Freshfields, Bruce Embley and Matthew Herman. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. Bruce and Matthew, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Thank you. Thank you. So, Bruce, explain to me how are the problems you deal with global? Because if something is a UK employment issue, then isn't it a UK employment issue? Well, it's a good question. Uh, in an interconnected world, it's amazing how often something becomes global when it seems like it could be local. So uh, in the M&A world, one of the key topics um, these days is the employee workforce and whether an M&A job is good for the employees or bad for the employees. One of the things that bidders will quite often like to do is to articulate synergies, which is sometimes code for uh, uh, cutting jobs. Uh, if there's an international workforce, the regulators and politicians in uh, countries where there are going to be jobs slashed will be less happy than those where there aren't. So that's just an example of how something can become a global issue. And Matthew, cross-border m and is being blocked a lot more now, isn't mm -hmm. it, in certain geographies and certain sectors. So does that make them tougher to do, impossible to do? <laughs> uh, it can make them impossible. And I think if you look at the jurisdictions and you look at the sectors, there are some these days that are sort of no way, no how. So China into the US in a sector that involves difficulty around national defense or technology is someplace that's going to attract a lot of attention. And it may well be under the current political climate kind of no way, no how. I think the challenge for advisors, and it's not just lawyers, but it's financial advisors as well, is not just looking at the obvious ones, but looking at the secondary and tertiary impacts of transactions. So look at today's impact. And how is that going to impact a deal that a client might want to do in the future? How are there political ramifications that will be consequential to today's deal? And how much harder, Bruce, is antitrust law getting to deal with? This is broadly when fair competition is insured for the consumer, isn't it? Yes, it, that's the broad remit. But there are so many antitrust uh, uh, authorities and different rules around the world. There's over 100 different antitrust regulators. And they've all got slightly different angles. And they're fast evolving their own uh, interpretation on deals as well. So to give you a couple of examples, the ATT Time Warner deal, that's a so-called vertical merger where there's not really any overlap. The US regulator has been changing its approach in how it uh, investigates and analyzes a deal like that. Uh, closer to home in Europe uh, with the Dow DuPont deal, the research and development part of that deal has become a standalone issue for the European regulator in a, in a way that they haven't really previously done. So those sorts of fast evolving changes are, uh, are something us advisors really have to follow. You have to think about, don't you? Matthew, countries are always looking for FDI, foreign direct investment, yet all these kind of antitrust and regulators seem to be sort of discouraging it. So how do you help your clients get what they want? Well, if you think about investment into countries as a three ring circus of risk, state, operational and transactional risk, a great way that we've found to help mitigate some of those risks for clients is around bilateral investment treaty structuring. That allows any dispute that arises in connection with the investment to be heard in a somewhat neutral forum. That makes the deal more financeable and fun fundamentally will make it more comfortable for your boards. And price isn't always the most important factor to somebody selling or buying, is it? What are the other factors that could be more important than the price? Well, that's a great question as well. The, the uh, price is always going to be important, but these days we're starting to hear national champions again. Um, uh, politicians getting very exercised about um, companies that have a particular identity with that country potentially falling into foreign hands. So that, I think, is, is a huge issue. But then there are other issues like where the headquarters is, uh, wh where um, the tax revenues are largely going to be generated, um, right down to how um, 
something like data is going to be properly protected. So these are all issues that, depending on the, um, the type of deal, might be uh, particularly prominent. And on all of those issues, uh, there's a lot of work to be done, sort of lobbying work, PR work. Is that part of your role? How is it changing your role? Well, it, it, it's all part of our role, because at the end of the day, if you look at any transaction for a client as three-dimensional chess, if there's a political pull, it's going to have a pull perhaps, or a push on the other side on your transaction. If there's PR or other IR that needs to be managed, then that's going to have a push on your deal as well. I mean, activists, to take an easy example, uh, in, in, in as recently as the Xerox Fuji case, they play a very prominent role in the M&A landscape. And I think that our job as advisors is to make sure that all of those tracks are running on the same, on the same line towards a successful conclusion for the client. And finally, how is the way that legal services are delivered changing with technology at the moment? I'll ask you, Bruce. It is changing. Uh, we're seeing techniques like uh, artificial intelligence uh, being used, and that's particularly to review contracts and pick up um, certain bits of the contracts that historically you might have had teams and teams of lawyers pouring over many hundreds or even sometimes thousands of hours, and this can now be done by a, a machine in, in a fraction of that time. But the, the core bit of the legal advice, good counsel, um, face-to-face negotiations, uh, get, properly uh, implementing in strategy around the deal, th- those, those core components haven't really changed uh, as a result of technology. That's the same. What would you say, Matthew? And I, I agree, agree 100%. I would say that at the end of the day, you look to where you added value in any given transaction, and you look to why you were hired by a particular client. And ultimately, it comes down to judgment. Uh, those calls can't be made by computers but they are made around the boardroom in deal negotiations and by giving advice to clients, and that's what they pay us for. Fantastic. Well, Bruce and Matthew, thank you very much. Thank Thank you. you. And join us next time when we'll be discussing the latest innovations in the circular economy and human capital. But for now, from me, Sarah Lockett, at the London Stock Exchange Studios, it's goodbye and thanks for watching.